The uh, purpose of this tutorial is to show how this uh, simulator works. Uh, this is uh, um, the, the website here, and it's used to simulate uh, projectile motion, and we're going to model that using Desmos. So uh, this is how you use the site. So this is a cannon that's going to fire, well, it's supposed to be a 5 kilogram pumpkin. Um, you can change the angle. Um, we generally would want it to be up somewhere, so uh, horizontal is kind of kind of boring. So let's you know, <coughs> excuse me, put it up here somewhere. You know, maybe at 30 degrees, something like that. You can change the uh, height here if you want to make it higher. See, it's right now it's going to fire from a height of four meters above the horizontal, above the ground. So you can make it whatever you want, really. I mean, there's your you know the problem with going up here is it's going to be off the top of the graph, some of it. So it's hard to collect the data then. So if you have it somewhere in the middle here, maybe I'll leave it at five. And this is the initial speed. Now, if you have the speed too low, like four meters per second is pretty short, and you fire it, notice that it doesn't even get out of the cannon. So and you can that's how you can erase. So if you have it something up and more in like the 15, 16 range, it's going to you know give us data that's that's usable. So maybe I'll I'll put it on 15. So you fire the cannon, and so. Every dot here is a tenth of a second, so that's a time zero, that's at a tenth of a second, two tenths, 0 0.3, 0 0.4, 0 0.5. That's actually, well, it's ten tenths, that's a second. So um, that's what the open circle looks like. Now if you grab this thing here, you, you can actually get the exact numbers. So if I put it right on here, see at a time of zero, um, its height starts at five meters. And so, um, and the, what the range is, it's a horizontal distance that's traveled. We're not going to worry about that part. So if I move this, let's say, to that point right there, at 0.4 seconds, it's 7.22 meters off the ground. So if you take uh, Desmos, and um, I've got this set up. Um, you can see the parabola here. We'll get to that in a little bit. But I'm going to make a table. Okay, so... I'm going to move it over here so we can see both at the same time. So down here, if I click on the plus, add an item, I'm going to add a table. And in the table, we'll scroll down here a little bit. So this is at, uh, this is at time zero here. So I'll start right there. Bring my Desmos graph. So this would be at zero, 0, 0.0 or 0, 0.0. It's at a height of five meters. I hit enter. So I'm going to move it over to here. So see all these are 0 0.1, 0 0.2. So that, whoops, I just missed. See that's at 5.7. So that's 5.7. And let's go back over here. So 0 0.1. I'm going to pause the video for a second and type in some like 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4 so I can do this more quickly. And actually, uh, after you've typed in a few, it'll start coming up. You don't have, like, I have a 0.8 now. If I just hit enter, see, it's going up by 0.1. So that's kind of a good thing. You don't have to type them all manually. So I've got the 5.7. Whoops. I lost my Desmos graph here. So the next one would be 6.3. So it would go 6.3 here. And then, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to pause the video and I'm going to enter all of these in, or a bunch of them anyway, and then I'll start the video again in a moment. So I've entered the first, well, just over just over a second. I've gone up to, see, 7.31 was the last one I did here at 1.1 seconds. So I've gone a little bit past the, um, the, the highest point of the parabola. And you can see the, uh, the curve starting here. Now it looks nothing like my quadratic function here. So what I'm going to do is, uh, you notice that this is going to, uh, we're, we've got a lot of ways to graph here. So I'm going to edit this a little bit and make my x-axis go a lot smaller. You know, I'm, I'm maybe going to go from about negative 3 to uh, maybe five seconds or something like that, just so I have more room to work with. So I, I didn't put all the data in for, for a reason. Okay, so what I'm going to do, so I'm going to go up here. So these are the sliders for A, B, and C. We're, I'm going to edit those to make this parabola match that data. 
So the first thing that you need to do is turn the parabola so it's opening downward instead of up. And that's actually, and you might have seen that before, uh, that's the sign of the A value here. As soon as I make it negative, see it's opening down. And you can experiment with it, you know, try to find it's getting somewhat close to the data uh, there. So, and uh, you have to just sort of play around with these. Okay, actually that's helping some. See, this number here moves the data up and down. See, look at, I've got it right on where I want it to go through the, uh, the y-axis, which is the height. Okay, so you need to just uh, play around with these a bit to make them match the data. This one actually kind of rolls on the axis a bit. And if you get up to 10 here, or whatever data you have, and it's not enough, what you can do is, is click on it. See, I'm going from negative 10 to 10 right now for the B slider. If you click on that, you can change it to go from, let's, like, let's say I want to change it from negative 5 to positive 15 or something like that. The step is the increments it goes in, so it's going up by 0.1s or a tenths this right now. So uh, that's what I want. Now, my, my curve is actually pretty well going through all the points. So the reason I didn't do the rest of the points is I want to be able to uh, use the curve to approximate when the, the pumpkin is going to hit the ground. So it looks to me like it's going to hit the ground a little over two seconds. Maybe 2.1 or you know 2.05 or something like that, a little over two seconds. So if we go back to the data here and actually go right to well actually it's not quite in the ground there see that's two seconds so right there oh 2.03 so that pretty much agrees with my graph my graph is pretty accurate compared to uh, what this data is telling me so so that's how you can use the simulator and uh, and use it to uh, approximate the function the uh, quadratic relation now so the quadratic relation here you see that's the a value I'm using negative 4.8 right there so it'd be y equals negative 4.8 uh, 7 plus uh, 7.4 x plus and my c is 5 uh, x here represents is the variable in this axis which would be the time in, in seconds and y the variable in this axis would be the height of the pumpkin so that's how you can use that uh, simulator along with Desmos and a table to uh, to model the projectile function. And of course, you can uh, you can change and alter uh, this to you know, start from a higher place to have a higher initial speed to go at a different angle. The problem with a higher initial speed, like if I take this up to like 28, then when I fire it, you know, it's off the graph, so I can't get to that data. So um, you know, it's it's not as usable to do it. There's probably a way to edit that, but I uh, I haven't uh, worked on that yet right now. So, but anyway, that's how the uh, the simulator works and how you can model some quadratic relation data. And that's the end of the tutorial.